Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I've built a system of puzzles here using the same principles for both of these. Uh, they're slide puzzles, essentially. So like this one is like the classic slide puzzle. You maybe played with one of these as a kid. And the idea is to just get them in the correct spot. Usually it's like a picture that's broken up into different squares, right? And so we can see the, the solved solution there. Or if we were to choose the other puzzle, this is more of like a traditional video game type puzzle. We have to get this yellow thing into the white square, but we can't because it's being blocked. So we can grab these other pieces and move them out of the way. And that gets us to our exit. Both of these, like I said, use the same exact system. So once you set it up once, you're good to set up a bunch of other puzzles really, really quickly. If you're interested in learning how to build this, stick around because I'm going over it right now. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna make is the shell or the outer part of the actual puzzle itself. So I'm just going to stretch a kind of big block here just so we have enough room. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the cube here and I'm just gonna use a negative edit. And so we're gonna want a three by three grid here. So I'm just going to create one. And so now we can reduce the size of this whole thing. So what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and label this scenery. And this doesn't really need to be collidable. You can leave it though. Um, we definitely don't really need any physics. And so what I'm going to be focusing on here is um, keeping the logic very neat and organized so that uh, this can be used elsewhere. Okay, so this whole board is probably going to need some sort of logic. Um, but first I want to make a cursor. So what I'm going to do is I'll get out a new sculpture, make the grid a little bit smaller for the cursor here. If I can grab the painting, there we go, and group the two together. All right, so this object, it doesn't need to be visible. It doesn't need to be collidable. We can turn on the physics cost if we'd like. And uh, yeah, that's it. So, I mean, we're just doing that so that we can group these two together. And now we're just going to use the painting. Now we can go ahead and stamp a microchip on here. So there we have a, a cursor. Now if we preview invisibility, we can see this is what the cursor is going to look like. Cool. So let's imagine we had some, um, some sort of block there. Some sort of puzzle piece. They look like this. This is what the cursor would look like on top of it. And that's cool. So uh, let's see. Inside of this microchip, uh, we're going to need a few things. First of all, we're going to need some variables. So I'm going to use this um, icon here for variables. We're going to need some sort of controls so that the player can control the cursor. We're going to need a way for this thing to move, which I'm going to decouple from the controls. Probably also going to need some sort of visual effects. That's nice. We're going to need some sound, that's for sure. So we'll get some sound, a sound microchip out. And we're also going to need some zones, so I'll get out a chip for that. So I'm also going to label this cursor. And here we have a nice uh, little thing here. So um, one thing I know that um, I'd like to get out is a tag. This is going to be at the front of the, of the, uh, the front center of this cube here. So there it is active cursor position right in the front. So in order to control this thing, we're going to need some sort of controls, right? And we're also going to need a way for it to move. So uh, we'll get out a controller sensor in here and I'll set this to remote control. Okay. And in here, this is our movement and we're going to need some way to move it. And I am going to use a follower. The reason I want to use a follower is because we can put in a target position. So let me get out a three number combiner here and we'll plug that straight into the target position. I'm going to crank up the strength and the damping and the speed so that it's at 100%. And now we're going to need something to happen here so that we can move the player around or the cursor. So inside of our variables, I'm going to get out a variable and I've labeled this cursor offset X and I'm going to create one for Y as well. 
So our controls are going to affect those variables. So I'm going to get out a signal manipulator, get out four of them, one for each uh, D-pad direction here. And so we have up, down, left, and right, up, down, left, and right. And these are all on a pulse. And I'm going to get out an exclusive gate because I don't want to be able to control more than one at a time. So these are going to go in here. I'm going to label all the exclusive gates so that they don't interfere with any other ones. And by interfere with other ones, I mean other exclusive gates that uh, are for other purposes. Um, so if you're not currently naming your exclusive gates, it's a good habit to get into. And so here we're going to uh, affect cursor offset X. And we're also going to be affecting cursor offset Y. Both of these are going to add one. And then we'll make a copy of these two. And these will subtract one. So if we're going up, then we want to add one to offset Y. If we're going down, we want to subtract one from offset Y. If we're going left, we want to subtract one from offset X. And if we're going right, then we want to add one to offset X. Okay. So inside of our board, I'm going to get out a tag here. And I'm just going to create this tag and I'm going to put it somewhere where we want the cursor to start. I will plug this into a wireless transmitter, the scene space transform. Inside of our movement, we can get that value. Default cursor position, that's the value we're getting out. And we're going to go ahead and split that. So this is a transform, so we'll have to split it twice. Once for the transform and then we'll split the position. And so the Z is going to stay unchanged, but the X and the Y values, we're going to add our offsets. So we have the offset X, and we have the offset Y. Let's get out a calculator. This follower position should be matching the tag. So I'm gonna put it in front. If I press right, we can see that it goes right over one and we really want it to move half because the distance from here to here is 0.5 so we could change these to add 0.5 or minus 0.5 but we can also just change it here so i'm going to set these to 0.5 so that our value gets multiplied by that and so now if i start time you can see that i can move this cursor around cool but I can move it outside of the border of the puzzle, which is not what we want, right? And so that's where the zones come into play. So inside of here, we're going to need some zones. So what we can do is I'll get out a keyframe and I'll turn all of these off. Then I'll copy these out. Okay, so we want up. And so this is up, down, left, and right. Okay, so each one of these turns one of those off, right? And so what we're going to be looking for here is we're going to be looking for the label of the scenery. Because remember, we set this outside border to scenery, and so we want this to know if it's right next to a, a scenery or not. So I'm going to move this like that, and I can make this zone very small. So that's for the left, and I'm just going to copy these out. Because of these um, trigger zones here, we can see that we can move down and we can move right, but we can't move left or up from our current position. Right? So if I press all now, since it starts down here, we can't move left and we can't move down. So if I press down, nothing happens. Right? If I press left, nothing happens. But if I press right or up, those work. There we have a working cursor. Um, now we need a way to be able to pick up pieces. In order to create a piece, uh, I'm going to just use this block here for now, and we can always replace it with something else. So I'm going to get out a microchip, and this is going to be a puzzle piece. Okay, and so inside of this puzzle piece, I'm going to get out a couple things. So I'm going to put a tag, and this will just be labeled puzzle piece. Okay, puzzle piece, there it is. Nice. And we want this to be kind of in the same type of front center position there. Okay, and so we want to be able to pick up this puzzle piece with the cursor. 
let me turn preview and visibility back on so that we don't see the block there right so i want to be able to uh, move this block up over this piece and then press a button to pick it up right then i should be able to move it around and then press the same button to drop it off and so i'll get out a signal manipulator and i'll plug x into this signal manipulator i'll put this on a pulse okay and so now um, what i think we need to do is we need one more variable here and this is going to be a boolean a true or false a yes or no on whether or not we're currently holding a puzzle piece okay so it's going to either be a zero or a one if we press X on top of a piece, we want to change the value of holding from whatever it is to whatever it isn't. So holding. So we'll get the value of holding. We will use a not gate to invert it. We'll plug that into the value and then we'll power that when we press X, but only if we're on top of a puzzle piece. So in order to determine if we're on top of a puzzle piece, I'll have a trigger zone that looks for that tag. Okay, and I'm just gonna make sure that this is right there in the center. We can make this small, like so. So if both of those are true and we press X, then if we're not holding something, it will change to a one. If we are holding something, then it'll let go. So if I go up twice and over to the right, we can see that we're currently detecting a puzzle piece. So if I press X, we see that the value of holding changes, right? And if I press X again, then we drop it. We haven't actually gotten it to do anything, but uh, one thing we can do right now is get the value of holding. And we will go ahead and set some visual indicator on our actual painting here. So I think I'll change this to a nice light blue and we'll give it a little bit more glow. All right, so then I'll call this cursor VFX and I'll plug that in. So now if I go up twice and then over to the right, if I press X, we can see we should be holding this, right? But currently the piece doesn't move with the cursor and that's what we need to change. So we have that. Let's uh, check out this puzzle piece. So we have a tag and we know if we're currently holding something. Now this tag is only sending out an output when it's being targeted, right? And so when the cursor's on top, that makes this true. Otherwise, it's off, right? There is no output. So if both of these things are true, meaning the tag output is on and we're holding, that means this is the piece that we're holding. Sounds simple enough. So what we'll do is we'll use a teleporter We'll put it on the front of this piece and we'll have it teleport to the active cursor position. If I move the cursor to the position of this block and press X, we can see we're now holding it. And as I move around, the piece moves with the cursor. Now, if I press X again, we drop it. All right, now another thing we can do is let's get out um, one more of these variable modifiers. We can play some sounds that'll help uh, sell the effect. So let me get some sound effects here. So I got this click and poppers and there's a stamper. Okay, so I think I'll make it so that when we pick up a piece, it plays this click and popper sound. And when we let go of a piece, we'll play the stamper sound. Now, I don't want it to play right at the beginning. So I'm going to have this counter here as a stop gap so that this will only play once we've picked something up and when we're not holding something. If I didn't have this counter here and I just had the knot, this would play right at the start, which, you know, that's not really what we want. So I'm gonna move up twice. If I move to the right, if I press X, it plays that sound. And if I press X again, we stamp it down. Cool, so there's a little sound effect. That's kind of nice. Uh, another thing we want to do is say we had two pieces here. What currently happens is if I move over this piece, we can move this around, but if I move it to the right one more time here, now we're <laughs> carrying both of the pieces, right? We don't want the pieces to uh, collide or go on top of each other. So inside of our zones, we'll get out another holding variable. And if we're holding something, then what we'll do is we'll make all of our trigger zones 
also include object. Because remember, we made this an object. Cool. So if that's the case, now these will include object. So let me label this. Here I've added my control thing so you can see if I grab this, if I press right on the D-pad, nothing happens. We're up. I can only move down and left from that position. We have our controls. Those are pretty much done. We have our movement, which is done. We have um, some visual effects for the cursor. That's cool. We have some sound and we've set up some zones and a tag. So I think we're pretty much done with the cursor, so I can close that for now. And now we need to figure out what we're going to put in our board. So let me label this. Uh, let's get out a microchip. Let's see, we'll probably need some sort of win condition. We can use this or we can use that. That's nice. Um, we'll probably want some music. So I'll put a music chip down. Now we're also going to want some gadgets. So let me get out a camera just so we can set up a static camera for this thing. Okay. And inside the camera, we'll turn off imps. It's this way we don't need imps. And that actually reminds me, uh, one other thing we should do is maybe add some sort of UI. Um, we can use this or we can use that. We want some sort of UI. So let me label this so that I don't forget. And now the UI is going to be really simple. We can just get a, a single text displayer out. But you know, if this is a more complex game, we may want something else. Okay, so let me stretch this out. I'm going to move this to the top left. I'll line it horizontally to the left as well. Let's turn off the background and that will make this white. We'll give it a little bit of brightness and let's change the font here. I like font seven a lot. Okay, so there's our UI. That's kind of easy. Um, and we could just grab some music off the Dreamiverse. Let me just grab a pre-made media molecule thing. I'm going to get this Heditate out. I'll use this. I don't know what's going on here. Play and okay, so it has a play and an end, which is actually kind of cool. Um, that's nice. Pretty much the only thing left to do at this point is to figure out the win condition, which this chip is currently empty. We got to put something in here so that uh, the puzzle knows when it's been solved. So uh, there are a bunch of different things we can do uh, in order to achieve this. We could use um, trigger zones or tags or something like that. For example, we could have tags in all these spots that have different names and each piece is looking for its uh, particular tag or something like that. Um, now, one thing I want to keep in mind here is consideration for setting up new puzzles. I, would, I don't want it to be tedious to set up a new one. and. Um, there's this uh, new thing in Dreams that uh, involves scope in a bunch of different things. So I think now is a good time to maybe try something like that out. So um, I think what I'm going to do, let me get out a cube here. And uh, what I'm going to do is this cube doesn't need to be visible or collidable. Um, and I'm going to group these two things together. So now this is a group. We got the puzzle piece and we're going to have this invisible cube uh, as part of this um, group as well. And so now what we can do is I'm going to get out a tag here. And uh, this is going to be the uh, position for this puzzle piece. So I'm going to label this. Uh, let's label it correct placement. OK, and so inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out a trigger zone that looks for that tag, correct placement. And it's going to look right here in the back of this piece. I'm going to make this zone very small. In this position, it's clearly uh, correct. And uh, just for now, get out a keyframe so I can color this something differently. So uh, when this thing is in the correct place, it's green, right? And so what's cool is inside this group, if this thing moves away from there, it won't see it. Now we need to make sure that it's only seeing this tag, because if we copy this whole thing out and say this was not here, we don't want this one to be green when it's over this piece's correct placement, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is inside the trigger zone, I'm going to change it to here meaning it's only going to look for the correct placement tag within its group. 
So now, if I have a copy of this, if this is not here, and we're moving this piece around, when it gets over this tag, it doesn't see it, because it's not seeing the correct placement tag from within its own group. Right, so now we have this puzzle piece that we can uh, place in here, and all it has to do is just fit right in where it would normally go. So we can see that even though we have that invisible cube, it won't move because uh, only this piece of the group is moving, not the whole thing. So that's pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, we want to know um, when all of the pieces are in their correct placement. And so I'm just going to call this solved, this tag here. And we don't need to care about where it is because what I'm going to do is inside of our win condition, let's get out a trigger zone. This is going to look for the solved tag. It's going to look everywhere and it's going to look scene wide. And what we can do is we can use this number here. So if there are eight pieces that all need to be solved, uh, then we can just set the number required to eight. And when all eight pieces are in their correct positions, this will send an output. So we can put a timeline here and this will go to play once and then maybe we'll get it out of sound. So I got out this wobbly bobbly sound. <laughs> Sounds like this. So that's gonna play when we're correct. And then uh, inside of our music, um, there's this switch here. So I will get out a keyframe that sets that to off, meaning it will turn, it'll play the ending sound in the music. And then if this were a scene, we could place a doorway and we'd be all set to go. So uh, I think the ending part of this is six seconds. So let's maybe make this a little bit longer. Okay, so it would sound like this. If we were if we were playing time, it plays the end and then it triggers a doorway. Cool. So all we have to do is place our other pieces. So if we were to, um, let's just bring this back down to one and we'll move this puzzle piece out of place. Now when we start time, uh, there's one other thing I wanna do. I don't wanna just turn it on when all the pieces are in place. Um, I want to turn it on when all the pieces are in place and we're not currently holding a piece. So we don't wanna accidentally go across the correct position and then it triggers. So uh, it's not holding and all of the pieces are solved. Then we'll go ahead and play this once. So now we'll start time and come over to this piece and we can see here it would be in the correct position and when I let go, nice. Now in order to make a puzzle that uh, is solvable, um, we also want um, something, you know, so that we can know where, where the pieces are supposed to go. So in order to make these, uh, you know, known which piece goes where, I've just put in a little temporary um, value slider here. So I'm going to move all of these into the puzzle. And then now all we have to do is mix them up so that they're not in the right order to begin with. I'm just going to come in here and make valid moves, move these things around. And you see I'm just scoping into the group each time to make sure that I'm putting them in the right places. Um, so I'm just moving the object inside of the group, whereas we can see that none of these have actually moved. Cool, so let's go ahead and see if we can do this. There we go, five, six, seven, eight, and there we go. So uh, we can see that this is uh, really easy to set up um, now that we have this built in. Uh, in order to create a new piece, we would just, or a new puzzle, we would um, pull this, you know, this element and one of these elements and we're good to go. What's cool about this is this is useful for slide puzzles like this, um, but it's also useful for other puzzles that don't, um, Aren't, that aren't necessarily a grid or a, uh, you know, a, a typical slide puzzle. We could use this for um, other types of puzzles as well. Here I've put together like a little puzzle thing. First of all, we're gonna need our cursor and uh, we'll have to turn this chip off. We can just drag a new one over here onto our new puzzle. We'll set the default cursor. So we can see the default cursor stays right there, nice. And now let's get a couple of these pieces out. So um, 
I'm only going to need one with the actual logic. So I'll copy one and then uh, a couple others. And these ones, we don't even need to worry about them being in the correct position. So I'm going to get rid of these. And for this, we can just pull this out, use the old one. There we go, I'll copy that. So these I'll just color uh, like a dark green or something. And this will be our piece that we need to actually move. Let's move this into the correct position. So this is where I want the piece to be. But inside of the group, I'm actually going to move our puzzle piece down here to where I want it to start. So it's going to start here, but we want to get it up here, right? And then there's going to be some things that are blocking our path here. So we'll just put these here and they block the path, right? Okay, so if we were to start this, let's see, let's make sure the camera's in the right spot. Okay, so we can't, we don't want to be able to pick these up. Oh wait, we do want to pick these up, right? But we can't get this up into the end zone without moving these out of the way. So if we were to move this, now we've cleared ourselves a path and then we're in the proper position when we end. So all we'd have to do is change this to one and now we can actually play our little puzzle here, right? So we can move this up, we can, just different ways we could solve this. And there we have the end of that puzzle. So it's really easy to adapt to using um, to making a bunch of different types of puzzles. It's just a, a nice system for being able to move pieces around and um, in, in like a grid-like fashion. So here you can see uh, this system works for a bunch of different types of puzzles and it's super easy and quick to set up. Um, I think what I'll do now is I'll take this puzzle chip, I'll take the cursor and I'll take one of these uh, blocks here and I'll package these three things as an element and I'll release it to everyone to use on the Dreamiverse. I'll also go ahead and package these two things up into a scene or a dream so that people can come in and uh, play them and take a look on the inside in case you wanted to. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're new around here and you want to see more Dreams tutorials, feel free to subscribe. I got another cool video coming out pretty soon that's going to take some of this into uh, account. And uh, that's all I'm going to spoil about that right now. Um, so I hope to see you around. I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. I'll see you next time.